Hey guys, welcome back to our VCP 6 out of 5 ICM hands-on training. This is lab 15 in the series. In this lab, we'll go ahead and explore the resource pool and the reason or the need for the resource pool. This will we'll go ahead and cover on a pretty high level. We'll go ahead and create some resource pool and then we'll try putting some kind of a stress on our CPU and then we'll see how the resource pool really comes into handy. So the whole idea behind the resource pool is something like this. When we go ahead and create a VM, you go ahead and assign certain amount of memory, CPU, CPU uh, to those VMs but there may be a situation on your ESX I host you could have a production VM as well as you may be running some kind of a test or dev VM where you don't want both of those VMs to be consuming same amount of CPU or memory resources or trying to compete for the resources in terms of CPU or memory so that's the whole idea where we can go ahead and create different resource pool within on a single ESX I host and we can move our VMs accordingly onto those different resource pool and on those resource pool we can go ahead and configure the number of shares they can uh, are available for cpu the amount of reservation that we can go ahead and do for cpu as well as for memory that way we can go ahead and potentially limit the resources which are available uh, to certain vms on that esxi host so let's go ahead and quickly uh, jump on to the hands-on and we'll go ahead and take a look so i've logged on to our vsphere uh, web client on the host 44 there are a couple of vms and i have powered on two vms vm3 and vm5 so let me go ahead and quickly show you the uh, spec for the vm3 if i go ahead and do an edit setting here so currently the vm3 uh, has been configured to use one virtual cpu there is a two gig of memory and there is a 32 gig of hard drive and let's go ahead and verify the similar things for the other vm so if i go ahead and right click on the other vm and do the same edit settings uh, this vm also has pretty much a similar kind of spec where we have one virtual cpu 2 gig of memory but let's say you know for some reason you want to have that vm3 to have access to more number of cpu resources or a bigger reservation in terms of cpu or memory uh, we can go ahead and do that because let's say you plan to run some kind of a cpu intensive work on vm3 where you need more cpu resources or cpu cycle versus compared to the 5.3 and that's the whole idea where we can go ahead and start creating the resource pool uh, creating a resource pool is very easy so just simply go to the host where you want to create a resource resource pool and go ahead and right click within that there on the right in um, this menu we have a couple option that says there is an option that says new resource pool so simply go ahead and click on the new resource pool and go ahead and specify a resource pool name uh, we can say lab vms so within this resource pools pages there are a couple things that we can go ahead and we can configure the number of shares which are available so we have different shares available there is a low normal high and custom you can go ahead and configure that if you need to do any reservation you can go ahead and definitely do that if you want to configure a certain limit not to exceed that we can go ahead and configure that right now it's being left to unlimited same thing we can go ahead and change these parameters for the memory let's say in this case we are working with the cpu so for the lab vms i don't want them to have a huge number of resources or cycles available so we can go ahead and change the number of shares to probably low and in terms of the limit also we can go ahead and limit how much cpu is probably available uh, to so we'll go ahead and say the maximum cpu available is one gigahertz same thing if you need to play around with the memory limits and some of the things uh, we can certainly go ahead and do that once everything looks good just simply go ahead and create this resource pool and as you can see our resource pool was just got created now let's go ahead and create another resource pool that would indicate our production or probably the development environment so let's go ahead and create another resource pool we'll call it our dev vms for my dev vms i want to have them the high number of shares available probably in terms of the limit for the cpu i want to have let's say 10 gigahertz of cpus to be available uh, to the dev vms a resource pool again if we need to change the memory reservation uh, we can go ahead and certainly apply the similar logic around the memory also everything looks good on this page so simply go ahead and click okay here so we went ahead and created our two resource pool if i go to the dev vms resource pool on the summary page if i go ahead and click you would can see some of the details if i go ahead and expand this high cpu it says okay the shares that we assigned was high that means 8000 shares the reservation is expandable the we had configured a limit of 10 gigahertz and similar thing we can check for the memory if we had configured any of such things right now within this resource pool we don't have any vms or template there are no vms which are powered or there are no virtual apps or anything if there is anything we can go to vm tab and we can take a look at resource pool it will give you the similar information here now let's go ahead and verify the same thing for the lab vm if we go to our lab vm summary tab it indicates for the lab vm we had configured the shares to be low that means only 2000 shares being available the limit being imposed is only one gigahertz here and 
some of the other things. Now, if you recall on this lab, uh, we had the two VMs available. So let me go ahead and launch a both the VMs console. So right now we are on the console of the both the VMs. And if you see on the VM3, I am running a fake CPU generation load script that I had quickly written in the VB. Uh, so that's the script, uh, the load that we have been running on Virtual Machine 3. Let's say this is our intensive VM and we want to have more resources or more cycle available for this VM. We can always go ahead and shift this VM to our uh, development VM. So let me go ahead and just simply do a drag and drop of this VM into our dev VM resource pool. And if I go ahead and expand that, you can see the VM3 was shifted into the dev VM's resource pool. So if you go ahead and click on the dev VM's resource pool one more time, it says, okay, hey, there is one VM right now. If we go back to the VM's, it would give you the VM details and we can go to the monitor tab to take a look at the utilization in terms of the consumed active and some of the other things. We can come back to the performance tab to quickly peek into the performance of CPU. So let's go ahead and click on CPU. And right now the data is not available because we just started. So give it a couple of minutes and we'll come back. Now at the same time, I'm on a VM5. So let me go ahead and start the similar load generation script on our VM5. So just I'm going to right click and open with command prompt and just leave it for a minute or two. Now this is a lab VM and I don't want this VM to be consuming a lot more resources on this ESXi host. So we can go ahead and relocate this VM to our lab VM resource pool. That way we can limit the amount of CPU and memory this VM is allowed to consume. So let's go ahead and simply uh, do a drag and drop to the lab VMs folder. And again, we can go inside the lab VMs folder. Uh, we can quickly take a look. Now we have a one virtual machine setting here. If we go back, take a look at the summary tab, it kind of indicates, okay, here, what are the things? If we go back to the memory tab, uh, we can take a look at in terms of the, what is the current utilization and some of the other details. So if we just leave the performance, maybe for a couple seconds, we should be getting some data here. Now let's go ahead and verify the similar thing for the dev VMs. It may still be a few minutes because we just enabled the uh, information here. Let's go back to the overview. So now let's go ahead and right now there is no data. So resource pool and virtual machine. So we can try changing to a different option and take a look. So as of right now, you can see we are reading some, we are getting some CPU utilization information on the screen. And right now it shows the usage in kind of the megahertz for the dev VMs resource pool. Now let's try going back to our lab VM resource pool and uh, try to quickly sneak peek over there now let's change it back to resource pool and virtual machines probably and as you can see this is the uh, resource utilization for our this particular resource so with the help of resource pool we can really restrict the amount of cpu and the memory resources which are available and you can accordingly move your vms onto the respective resource pool as well as on the fly you can go ahead and change some of these resource pool if you need to let's say for the lab resource pool uh, we can certainly go ahead and do an edit here which says added resource setting and right now for the cpu we had assigned the low number of resources shares so we can go ahead and change it to normal custom or anything that you desire so these changes are also in real time and you can go ahead and make some of the change. And that's how you can make the resource pool to really restrict your resource. That'll be all for this lab. I will see you in the next lab.